That's odd. Why isn't it letting me check that box? I'm not really a robot, even though I played one once in a famous sci-fi movie you may have seen. I'm Sean Young, the actress, and I'm not an android or a replicant either, I swear. No, if you really want to learn more about artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and the Internet of Things, you'll have to catch this upcoming edition of Soft Ingenuity podcast hosted by Bob Jelinas. Oh, and in case you were wondering, yes, I do sometimes dream of electric sheep. <laughs> This is Bob Jelinas with Soft NG, and we're here today in our Soft Ingenuity podcast to talk about uh, the use of artificial intelligence in uh, marketing and retail. This is a hot topic these days, and we want to help understand this a little bit better. Today, I have with me uh, Miss Olga Sherry Haloba, if I said that right. And yeah. Olga is head of marketing here at Soft NG, and she's going to share a lot of her personal insight into these technologies and how we're using them to help a lot of our clients uh, improve their business results. So the first question I want to ask you, Olga, is uh, I understand that a majority of people out there really feel like, you know, now is the time for artificial intelligence or AI, as it's referred to, in uh, e-commerce and retail marketing. It this is the time for that to really come to the fore. But unfortunately, a lot of people really don't know how to approach this technology. Um, so what can we uh, recommend to people that want to know more about AI and retail and marketing? OK, hi, Bob. Thank you for the question. So before answering it, I need to say that we have to clarify what AI is, because AI is an umbrella term. So. Uh, in reality, it incorporates many subcategories like machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, um, object character recognition, computer vision. Each of these subtypes, subcategories has direct applications in e-commerce and retail marketing. And uh, some of them are easier to implement and customers will have direct feedback, some of them take more time, but each of them has its own value. Okay, great. Well, then let's just start at the beginning with uh, the AI technologies that e-commerce and marketing are already using um, and that people probably are most familiar with. I mean, if I had to ask you, which one would you probably think of first? I would definitely answer that recommender engines are the most useful, the most popular, and the most well-known because we all use them, actually. When you choose a Netflix film yeah. or when you choose uh, some new product on Amazon, you're actually using a recommender engines. It's a machine learning algorithm that is created for helping you to choose the most relevant product. Uh, this application of AI has uh, benefits for businesses and it also has benefits for clients. Businesses can sell more goods, uh, recommend more relevant services, and clients can choose goods and services faster. They can choose goods and services uh, that are more like that are better for them. So this is one of the most useful and efficient AI applications so far for both parties. Okay, so this is like the thing when you go on Amazon and you buy a new toaster or whatever, It when you go scroll down looking at it, it says, well, if you like that, then you're going to love these three other things, right? Right, that's it. So uh, whenever you choose something and you see relevant recommendations, uh, when you choose a pair of sneakers and you see a new t-shirt, not something else, not a washing machine, it means that uh, algorithms uh, work well and that the company has invested into their development. 
Okay, so this isn't just a random thing that Amazon is mentioning. There's actually real machine learning behind this, and there's math that uh, help make these determinations. Yes, yeah, so that's a lot of work behind it. Actually, Netflix invested a lot of money into creating a perfect algorithm. So they uh, are often uh, regarded as the kings of uh, personalization. Whenever you choose something that's uh, chosen particularly for you. So any e-commerce site or retailer can have these type of recommender engines if they don't have them already? Yes, right now it's available to any e-commerce website. And I would say that the majority of e-commerce, all e-commerce and retail websites should have these algorithms implemented. It's possible to analyze uh, the history of a consumer's past be, uh, shopping patterns. It's possible to analyze people, customers with similar tastes to recommend something relevant. It's even possible to predict what a person is likely to buy, uh, analyze in a past history and recommend something, something really good for each customer. Awesome. Okay, that's number one. So now what would you say is the number two most relevant uh, AI technology that e-commerce and marketing uses? Right now, these are pricing algorithms. <laughs> Uh, that's again machine learning algorithms that help uh, e-commerce websites to arrange prices in a smart way, so to say. As you know, uh, pricing uh, is uh, one of the milestones of effective uh, sales. So in e-commerce, prices have to be regulated all the time, um, considering such criteria as the competition on the market, as the availability of the goods, season, some holidays, many, many, many factors using which uh, e-commerce stores have to regulate these prices. Okay, that sounds very logical. I mean, very interesting. Now, is it, or do they all work the same or are there different versions of these type of algorithms? Well, uh, I am not a machine learning engineer, of course, but I know that there are different types of these pricing algorithms. Uh, to name a few, I would say there is a Black Friday algorithm, uh, there is a Third Eye algorithm. Um, they help to answer the question when to raise prices, how much to raise prices, to sell more and to gain more customers, so to say. This, uh, algorithms of different kinds give uh, the most accurate suggestions for e-commerce stores and again both businesses and customers um, reap the benefits of these uh, smart algorithms well that makes sense so i guess do my understanding correctly that you're saying that these intelligent systems uh, can make pricing more dynamic that they can actually change based on changing circumstances Yes, of course, they analyze the data they receive from, from the competition, from, from the market, and uh, react accordingly without human intervention. Okay, well, let's shift gears a little bit here because I'm very curious personally about uh, chatbots. Uh, I, I understand that they're kind of a function of a certain range of artificial intelligence and that that's changing a lot. But I just have to say personally that I've used them in the past and for many of them haven't been terribly impressed. Uh, so kind of where, where are things happening right now with chatbots and artificial intelligence? Mm, uh, chatbots are a good example of artificial intelligence. <coughs> And as well as you, I had negative experience with the chatbots. I tried to chat with uh, different customer support chatbots on various websites and they couldn't answer like basic questions or just stopped or like the majority of people right now have negative experience with, with chatbots. But uh, that are chatbots of older generation. Uh, they don't use uh, modern algorithms like to name one is one of the most favorite is uh, GPT-3. Uh, it has enormous impact on the natural language processing on the ability to create human-like dialogue. So right now, uh, e-commerce stores can use this 
chatbots of new generation. They are even not called chatbots, they are called um, intelligent virtual assistants. So they can like guide uh, a customer through the shopping process, answer questions at night, anything like that. So there are chatbots of a new generation and we should try them as well once. Okay, <clears throat> well let's, let's kind of leave the online experience for a moment and kind of come back to real brick and mortar stores. I mean, can artificial intelligence help at all with uh, people that are still going to real retail locations? Yes, sure. I would say that computer vision is the most uh, efficient and the most useful application in this uh, context. So each retail store, each shopping mall, for example, has cameras. It means that they have video that can be analyzed online and some insights can be generated online for marketers for sales. Um, so computer vision, machine vision is the most uh, efficient application for real retail for those people who still go to the stores. Okay, well, you mentioned cameras there. I heard uh, one time uh, something called video analytics. I mean, is that part of using these cameras in retail stores? And if so, how does that work? Video analytics is the technology that combines computer vision, the possibility to analyze images and machine learning or deep learning on the deeper level. And with this technology, it is possible to gain insights using images or video in a, as in our example. For instance, bright example, you have uh, video cameras that generate video and using video analytics technology, you can control the amount of goods on the stores, uh, on the shelves in the store. For a huge shopping mall where goods are like bought instantly, I don't know, on Christmas, <laughs> that can be a really life-saving feature because uh, sure, the, sure. the alarms, the notifications that some goods, uh, that there are not some goods, there are not enough some goods, uh, can be sent directly to the person responsible for them. Okay, well that, that sounds great, but uh, don't a lot of stores already do that or is this something new? Mm. I doubt that a lot of stores uh, do that, but I think a lot of stores are investigating it right now. And in future, there would be a waste of resources not to use this video footage for this purpose. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, I, I would like to mention another example of this sure. video analytics for retail. Uh, these are heat maps of the storms. For instance, big uh, shopping malls, some uh, mm -hmm. big stores can create the heat maps of the stores and understand what areas are emitted, where uh, there are some queues, constant queues, for example, what areas uh, attract the most attention. So this heat map will show like the, the real store in a historical period of time and for marketers thus that can be like life-saving, very insightful, so to say. Okay, well, but like most technology, I mean, was this or is this today cost prohibitive for a lot of retailers to do this or is it becoming more affordable as we you know, move into the future? I think uh, there is uh, some prejudice that this technology is not affordable, affordable, sorry. <laughs> But in reality, it's getting more and more affordable with each day the technology progresses, especially AI, the, the development of AI is incredible. So what cost a lot in the past can be affordable for the majority of even small and medium sized uh, retail stores, e-commerce websites. So this is ev uh, available for any, any uh, retail or e-commerce business that want to choose digitalization as its main directory, so to say. Okay, that's wonderful. Well, I guess just goes to show how much uh, more 
cyber everything is perva pervading into every aspect of our lives. You know, we don't just have the general store anymore. You know, now our computers are making uh, our shopping experiences smarter, more effective, and hopefully at the end of the day, much more successful for the retailers and the marketers themselves. Well, this is about uh, all of our time we have for today. We thank everybody for tuning in, watching our podcast here on Soft Ingenuity, and we'll do it again very soon. I want to thank Olga for sharing all that information with us, and we'll see you again. This is Bob. Bye-bye.